Hello, how are you? This is Vanessa Ortali from the Ladies Community, and I am here with sex expert, uh, Stephen Dewitt. <laughs> and I'm so pumped for you to be here. I know Stephen's main goal and mission right now is to educate women and talk to women about sex, sensuality, because it's such a big part of life and who we are. And there are so many stigmas around you know, slut shaming, what sex means, pleasure. And I think we really just need to bring this topic to the surface and make it really real and educate ourselves because we don't get sex education. And in so many cultures, it is not a thing to be talked about. So I will turn it over to Steven. Please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit more about you and then we can dive into some of the good stuff. Awesome, thank yeah. you. Well, first of all, uh, Vanessa, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be with you and the ladies community. Now, most people are like sexologists and they're like, what? What the heck is that? I've never even heard of that. And so if you're part of that crew, uh, you're in great company. My mom still asks me the question. My dad doesn't want to know the answer. Um, but as a sexologist, um, what I'm committed to is people living a sexually empowered life and they have relationships that work. Right. And what my gift is making the uncomfortable comfortable. So what that looks like in my day to day life is I do a lot of speaking at conferences and conventions. Um, I do VIP retreats um, for people to transform the sex life that they have into the sex life that they actually want. Um, and I do a lot of media and things of that nature. So that's what it looks like in my day to day life. And then people are like, well, how did you become one, right? And then the back of people's heads is like, did you just have sex with a lot of people and now you're just that guy? Um, no, um, and not to say that I didn't have a lot of sex, but that's a whole other story. But um, so I actually went to school. So I did a master's of public health with a specialization in human sexuality. And then I did my clinical placement at the Hassle-Free Clinic, which is uh, Canada's largest anonymous HIV testing site in Canada. And that's really where I cut my teeth in accepting anybody and everybody who walks through that door. Because I'm just there as, uh, you know, providing service and care for people that need it. So that's really where my bias and my judgment, you know, I really got to be in touch with that and be able to set that aside so I could just serve people. And then I went back and I completed my doctorate and finished that in 2012. And then I've just been building the business. I have a book. I have an online course. And really what lights me up is, is working with women. And, um, you know, women are the consumers of any kind of sex education. They want to learn more. They're interested. They're excited about it. There's been shifts in the conversations about female sexuality from, if we look at Sex in the City to Fifty Shades of Grey to the Me Too movement to, you know, all these different things. And women are stepping up and they are owning their voice. And that's a really exciting thing for me to be part of and me to support and me to, you know, connect with women and help them access their voices, own what works for them and be able to communicate that with their partner or their partners so they can have that amazing sex life that I think is a human right and that everybody deserves. What are the most common things that people and women specifically come to you for? What is their biggest complaint or, and or question? Um, that, so I can, I'll, I'll, I'll start general and then work my way down. So um, the, the biggest challenge that um, people have around sex is um, communication. We have never been taught how to talk about sex in like a real way that actually makes a difference. So much of our identity as human beings is caught up in our sex. So unless we're being told, oh my God, you're a sex goddess or you're a sex god, we don't know what to do with it. So what happens is people don't have those conversations because they don't know how to have that. They're worried what their partner is gonna say. They're worried about being judged. And then they sweep that under the rug. And then you keep sweeping it under the rug. And eventually you can't stand on the rug anymore because there's so much crap underneath. And then the relationship starts to devolve. And any type of relationship, I don't care if it's a booty call, a one night stand, you're married for 25 years, you go to sex clubs, whatever that is, is a lack of communication. The second thing that I find is 
um, challenging for people is the myth of sexual symmetry. So what I mean by that is, oh, how I like to have sex, the type of sex that I have, the frequency of sex should be the same as my partner. If my partner loves me, if we're on the same page, if we're like jiving and connected, that they should like the same sex that I should, that I should, right? And it, and it doesn't work that way. We're often at different places in our life with stress and, and evolution and turn-ons and cycles and everything else. It doesn't have us on the same page. But again, we don't have that communication, so we don't know how to talk about that in a way that works. And then if you look at sexual symmetry in the broader context, it's like, oh, well, um, she's having lots of sex, so she must be happy. Or, oh, she had sex with like three different guys last week. Oh, she's a slut. So we want to find and, and want to have the same with our friends, with the people that we surround ourselves with. And for me, that's a very suffocating way to live life. And so I'm all about, you know, the, the most important sexual relationship you'll have with anyone in your entire life is the one that you have with yourself. So that's why I do the work with people and clients to um, get in touch with themselves first. What is, uh, what is their sexual relationship with themselves? What's going on? What are the stories that you know, you're telling yourself when you're thinking about having sex with your partner? Or are you thinking about yourself as a sexual being, how you feel about your body, how you feel about you know, your partner or the relationship? So that's something, so communication, sexual symmetry, and then with women, it's, it's really, you know, there, there's so many things that are at, at play that women, specifically in North America, that have been taught is to um, not have a voice, is to be, have it, the pleasure be all about um, your partner, and I'm generalizing here, but the pleasure all about your partner. Um, uh, you know, uh, difficulty with orgasming, and how that shows up in your sex life, or for some people doesn't show up in your sex life. Um, the world of, I mean, I, it goes on and on and on about shaming, guilt, fear, not to mention even the darker side of things, which is sexual abuse, molestation, rape, which is you know rampant in, in society today. And so um, reclaiming that power and owning who you are as a woman and being able to complete the past and then actually connect authentically without all that baggage and stories and stuff that you've been taught. So, you know, the work that I do is deconstructing those messages that don't work and then re-education. You talked about sex education, real sex education. So the work that I do is like re-educating people about what is possible and how they can connect and what can actually light them up and have sex be fun and exciting and pleasurable rather than something that isn't those things. Okay, I love everything you just said and I wanna dive into each one of those topics. Let's and, go. Yeah, one of the best things that also correlates with our community is that you started talking and helping women with their sex, sensual relationship with themselves. Because Hell, in yeah. order to be sexual with others, we need to really tune in. There's so many women that can't touch themselves and mm -hmm. then want to have sex mm -hmm. and or have sex. So there's this disconnect and you help bring that connection together. Oh, for sure. One of the most common things that I hear, um, and if we talk about like women's sexual pleasure or orgasms, you know, there's women that um, uh, have never had an orgasm before or um, which is called in my world primary anorgasmia so you've never had one and then secondary anorgasmia is like you can have it sometimes with some partners or maybe when you're bringing pleasure to yourself but you can't have that with a partner and so they're like Stephen, how do i how do i find someone who can give me an orgasm and i'm like mm, that's not that's not how it works so if orgasms were given I like to joke and be like, over the holidays, I would have gotten orgasms and wrapped them up in little, you know, cute boxes and given orgasms to everybody. But orgasms aren't given. Orgasms are shared. So for you as, as a woman to share your orgasm, what does it take? And so the question that I often ask women is, 
especially if it's the secondary anorgasmia. So you can have orgasms with yourself or with certain partners, but not with other ones, or you used to have orgasms, but you don't anymore, is the question that I, I ask, and for you to ask yourself is, what's missing when I have sex with that partner that's present when I'm having sex with myself, or what's present when I have sex with Bob or Susan or whatever, but I can't have sex when I'm having sex with Sarah or Jake. And so often what it is, it's not about um, uh, technique or sometimes people are like caught up in like, if your partners are, are male, penis sizes and like all this other kind of stuff, it's usually, do I feel safe? Do I feel respected? Am I comfortable? And often when I approach things that way, people are like, oh yeah, like I don't. Like I'm up in my head, I'm worried about this. I don't know what this actually means. What are they gonna think about me tomorrow morning? Like this time or last time this didn't happen. Like we can get all caught up in that. And so it is so much about um, understanding yourself mm -hmm. and understanding what's going on for you. And again, this is a mindset shift because for a lot of women's lives, this is something that I do to please my partner. You know, and if we look at just the arc of, of male sexuality and male peaking and female sexuality and their peaking, it's like early on, you know, quote unquote, most people, if we look at, at, at like the statistically normative part of it, are having sex in their teenage years, right? And that's when, you know, me as men and other men, we're, you know, all excited and reaching our peak. Well, women aren't. But then, so you have this conditioning of like, oh, it's not, I mean, I can do it and it's kind of pleasurable. And again, I'm generalizing maybe different for other people, but for the majority of women, it's later on when they can step in and own their sexuality and own what really works for them. So what else can women do to dive deeper into their connection with sexuality with themselves? Yeah. So we talked a little bit about mindset and some of those questions. What else can we do? Yeah. So. Um, one of the things, so I, I wrote a book in 2014 called The Sexual Freedom System, Winning the Inner Game of Sex. And so uh, there's, there's a step-by-step -step process. And the, the first step in the process is developing sexual self-awareness and understanding what I call your sexual blueprint. Because most people walk through life and they're like, I like that, that's hot, that's gross, that turns me on, that's perverted, that makes me hard, that makes me wet, blah, 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 blah. And that's just the way, that is, and that's their truth. Now, the reality is, is for most people, you know, sex is something that is learned. We learn sex from somewhere or some person or some time in our life, and we've received messages about that. And so understanding your sexual blueprint comes from a place of, what were the messages that I received around sex? Who told me those? What did I make that mean in my life? And then how does that impact me now? So for some people, and there, there could be really great things, really empowering things that you were taught about your sexuality and how to share that and when to share that with whom and all of this. That's a beautiful thing. But often, and especially women, they've been told these really negative things that then prevent them from connecting the way, excuse me, that they want with their partners. So understanding the sexual blueprint piece is really important inside of, oh, what were those messages? How did I learn about sex? Where, who taught me? Um, what were those messages? How does that impact me today? What am I making? And how does that get in the way of me connecting with my partner? And then looking at those things and then deconstructing that, substituting really healthy ways to believe in yourself and, and have that healthy mindset about sex. If you deserving a really great, vivacious, luscious, fun, loving sex life, or whatever other adjective that you want to have. So what are some of the best ways to change that blueprint? Yeah. So um, a lot of Again, the work that I do is, so when you are changing that blueprint, so once you've identified, like these are the negative things, and then, hey, how do I, what do I want right now in my life? So if one of them, for example, is like, oh, um, if I want more sex than my partner, that's bad. And then so be like, okay, and that may have you know, come from an ex or something like that. So something that you can do is, and again, write this out is, 
um, I deserve to have my sexual needs honored, heard and honored. Or, you know, I deserve to be able to have and share with my partner the amount of sex that I want. I deserve great sex, something like that. So you write that down. Another thing that I have is like mantras. And I'm sure, you know, lots of people in your community um, have mantras about success and about life and about health and fitness or deserving or the universe and all that kind of stuff is beautiful. But people are like, oh, my sex life? Like, I don't know about you, but how many people make uh, um, New Year's resolutions about their sex life? Probably very few people. So I have people do mantras for themselves. I do have people do physical exercises where they're actually moving forward and stepping into that in a literal sense. So you start in one place and you say, my old belief was, you know, um, if I want more sex than my partner, that's a bad thing. And then take a step forward and say, that no longer serves and honors who I am. And then take another step forward and then have the new mantra of, you know, I deserve the sex that I want. And I deserve to be able to communicate that and have that with my partner. Right? So those things are powerful to do. If you have, you know, another thing is if you are partnered, and I know some people are single or don't have someone that they can talk to, or you have a friends with benefit or whatever. But if, if you do have a partner that you can talk to, is share with them that you're on a journey. And you're on a journey because you want to have a great sex life. And that person is part of that with them. So when you can, and if you do have a partner that you can share like, hey, you know, I want to step into this and I want to own more of this. And this is what I'm doing and sharing that with people. Your partner, number one. And then if not, just sharing that with your friends. You know, your close group of girlfriends that you're like, hey, listen, I've been carrying a lot of shame around this, a lot of guilt around this, a lot of fear around this, and I'm not. And this is something that I'm committed to. And I just want to share with you guys. So when you can declare that and share that with other people, it is that much more powerful, right? And again, you got to be careful about who you share that with because again, people are walking around with their own baggage, with their own stuff. And for me, it's, it's about empowering you and where you are in your sexual evolution. So some people were like, oh, well, um, you know, this is the way I've always seen sex. This is the way I've been taught to have sex. And this is the way it is. And then if you look at it that narrowly, eventually that for most people, that becomes boring. And appreciating that we all evolve sexually. So what worked for you five years ago may not be what works for you now and turns you on. And what works for you now may not be what turns you on in five years from now. But allowing yourself to evolve, get in that creative space of, hey, this is, it doesn't have to look like this all the time. And I have some freedom to diversify what sex looks like and how I connect with my partner. What are some symptoms that women might be experiencing that may be good signals and indicators that they should dive deeper into this whole sensuality yes. and sex world. Sure. So if you find yourself avoiding sex, if you find yourself avoiding talking about sex, um, if you find that it's painful during sex, if you are not lubricating and getting wet during sex, those are some red lights to start looking at, hey, what's actually going on here? Like, is this actually serving me? Like my body, like listening to our bodies and what they share um, with us and what they tell us is so important and so vital. I, you know, I've worked with women and, um, uh, you know, sh the, the woman in, in particular was just in an unhealthy relationship and there was, you know, addiction on her partner's part and all this other kind of stuff. And she wasn't getting turned on. She wasn't getting wet. and she was like, Stephen, I think there's something wrong. She's like, my pussy's not working, you know, all this other kind of stuff. And I was like, mm, why don't you tell me what's going on in your relationship? And I believe, I strongly believe that sex is a symptom of what's going on in your relationship. So for her, it's, it's her body saying, this isn't safe. This isn't okay for me to be in a sexual, like relaxed place and be turned on and getting wet and all that other kind of beautiful stuff. So I'm just not. But her head is saying, oh, but you should because it's your partner for X number of years and it's going to make them happy and all this other kind of stuff. And then it's not good. It's painful. And, you know, it just, 
leads to avoiding sex and not talking about it and and that well with it what is the easiest thing and it might not be easy <laughs> but what is a tip Women, you know, when we get in our heads and you're kind of alluding to this right now, we could be having sex, thinking about laundry, thinking about work and the stress and everything in our lives builds up. Yeah. What is the best way for us to truly just let that go and be present with our body and our partner? Okay. So great question. Um, and I have uh, something that I'll share with you. And because that's so common, we're up in our head, we're thinking about you know, doing taxes, with kids, garbage, you know, the relationship, am I going to orgasm? Is he going to orgasm? All that other kind of stuff can be going on in our head. And then we become spectators, right? We're up here kind of like observing what's going on down here and hoping that it'll be good or hoping that it'll be over soon or hoping that he comes soon or she comes soon or whatever. Um, so really great question. So one of the techniques um, that I'll share is something called sensate focus. Okay, and what that is, so if you just hold up your left hand, and if everyone can do this, just hold up your left hand, and just like touch with your right hand, just touch the top of your left hand. Okay, does that feel anything different than it normally would? Yeah. It doesn't have to. Yeah. It doesn't have to. Okay, so <laughs> this answer, is like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know about the rest of everybody else. Because <laughs> so, I'm paying attention to it. So I'm like, oh, that feels nice. Okay. So that's good. So you're paying attention to it. But often when we touch and we're touching our partner, so see if your left hand is your partner and your right hand is you, we're touching because we want to bring them pleasure. So sensate focus. So I want you to do it again, but I want you to go, first of all, as slowly and lightly as you can. So again, you're going to touch your um, left hand with your right hand, but I want you to focus on that it's almost like your left hand is touching the fingertips of your right hand. So you're actually feeling the little bumps, maybe the hairs on the back of your hand. So go ahead and do that. So you want to go as lightly and slowly, but you want to actually feel that your left hand is actually touching your right hand. Did you, did you do that? Yeah, very cool. Right? Yeah. So it's, so that's sensate focus. So when your mind is wandering, you can do that. And it just helps you slow down. It helps you focus. And you can touch your partner wherever, right? It doesn't have to be their hand. It could be, you know, a place on their body that turns them on. And the, so that's the first level is just kind of getting focused on receiving pleasure from touching your partner. And then the next level is you can switch that to different parts of your body. It doesn't actually have to be your hands, right? So you can do sen that sensate focus exercise with your lips. So again, lightly and slowly, but caressing a part of their body with your lips. And then the next level of that is you can get your, you can do that. So say with your lips, and then you can tell them to meet you there. So what that can look like is you're, you're you know, um, uh, caressing their body with your lips and then you tell them meet me here and then they come and they give you a kiss right because you're now inviting them into this world and it shifts that energy I think we've all been in that place where we're like having sex and it's like you're not really feeling it your mind's somewhere else and the reality is they they're feeling that disconnect and they're like what's going on and you just kind of keep doing it and then it's over and it's awkward you're like uh, okay let's uh, not do that again for a while and it's, it's what that um, speaks to, it's what's called the erotic cycle of arousal. So when you're with a partner and they're turning you on, you get turned on. And they're like, oh shit, they're turned on. I want some of that. And then it's this, this cycle that goes around and around that's really awesome. What happens is the opposite can happen, right? Is like you're disconnected and they're like, oh, you know, they can sense that you're not really on the same page as them. So then they get up in their head and then it can go the other way where it's this world that we don't actually um, actually share with our partners because we're not on the same page with them. So really great question. And I hope that gives some people something to try. Yeah, that was great. Can you also share, because I know when we originally met and we were on a panel together, you talked about how to properly communicate with your partner. Mm -hmm. and you had yeah. some, can you share those steps? Because they're so useful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so... You know, often when 
we have conversations or we know we should have conversations. So, you know, if, if you can see yourself like, oh yeah, I can look at the past and I should have had that conversation with them and you didn't, or maybe you're sitting there being like, oh shit, I definitely should have this conversation about sex. But how do you start it? Again, going back to the beginning is we, we were never taught how to have like real conversations about sex. Um, so I came up with a communication technique called the Lita technique. So it's L-I-T-A. And what this does is, in my studies, uh, again, I did a lot of work around communication because I think that's the access to great sex, hands down. Um, is what's missing is, is when you start talking about sex, your partner doesn't know why you're bringing it up. So I'm not sure if people can relate, but maybe you've brought up something to a partner or maybe a partner has brought something up to you and you're like, your mind could just go a million different places. Like they don't like me anymore. They're going to leave me. They're cheating on me. Uh, my butt's too big. Uh, you know, I'm not sexy or I'm not sexually satisfied. Like it just goes, right. Cause we can spin out cause we've grown up in what I call a sex negative society that everything has got to be perfect and you have to be perfect all the time. That's just not the case. And the second thing that is usually challenging is we're so caught up in what we have to say and we're nervous about it. We just kind of like blurt it out on the other person and then just like hope something really great is going to come from it. And I don't know about you, Vanessa, but that rarely in my occurrence as a human being and someone who talks about sex and as a professional that works with clients, that usually doesn't work. So the Lita technique was set up to actually um, address those issues. So again, L-I-T-A. So again, if you think of something, and I want people to take this on in their lives, think about a conversation that either you should be having right now with your partner about sex, or think of the past of like, oh yeah, I totally should have had a conversation with them, and then map the Lita technique over it, okay? So L, you want to start off by sharing what you like or love about the person or the relationship. Now I say like or love because, hey, it may be new, and so you don't want to use the love word, right? And you may want to talk about the relationship rather than the person. Or listen, if you've been together and you have that level of intimacy, you can share what you love about that person. But you, you, so you start setting a safe context for them. So you know, like, oh, they love me. They love this relationship. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. So I can, I'm just chill. It's cool. Then the second part is I. You want to share with them what's important to you. Or said another way, what are you committed to for the future? Right. So it could be like, um, you know, Vanessa, like I love our relationship and I really like when we can spend time together and to connect. And I love the, the, the direction our relationship is going. And it's really important to me that you and I can talk about things and specifically talk about sex because, you know, I'm committed that we have a great sex life. So that's a demonstration of the L and the I. So again, like or love about the person in the relationship, and I share what's important to you about the person in the relationship. Said another way is what are you committed to for the future? And then the T is the topic. You wanna to bring up the topic that you wanna share, you know? And, but because that person knows, okay, you like or love them because of this, you know what's important, you know why, you know, they're bring, because you set a context now, so it's safe, kind of couch the conversation, and then you bring up the topic. And then the last part is A, and this is really important. I say it's A to the power of two or A squared because there's two questions. First of all, you want to ask them, are you open to having this conversation right now? Because maybe they're not. Maybe the dog died. Maybe their boss yelled at them. Maybe they're just feeling crappy today and they don't want to have the conversation. That's fine. If they say no, say great. When would be a good time to have the conversation? I don't know about you, Vanessa, but when people ask me, like, hey, Stephen, are you, you know, can we talk? Are you open to have a conversation? And I say no, and then they keep talking over me. I want to punch them in the throat, right? So we want to respect our partners. If they may not be in that place to have that conversation about sex at that time, perfect, no problem. So the first part is, you know, are you open to having this conversation right now? And then the second part is really crucial. You want to ask them for their thought, for their feedbacks, how they feel about it. Great, like, because I really want to know What's going on for you about this and, and what's happening? So now it becomes a co-created conversation rather than you just like blurting it out on your partner and then just like hoping that it's going to be a great conversation while their mind is like thinking about the terrible negative stuff that is not really there for you, but they go into, excuse me, a fear-based response and then the conversation can get 
sideways. And, you know, I hear that a lot with people. It's like, I had the same conversation again, again, and again. So L-I-T-A, that's the Lita technique. And it's um, been used. And another really cool thing about it is it doesn't have to be just about sex and intimacy. Use the Lita technique in other areas of your life. So I was speaking in Toronto and there's this guy in the front row and I'll never forget his name's Omar. And as a speaker, I love it when people are like super engaged and they're like taking notes and they're like, oh yeah, this is Stephen. He's so good, right? So he comes up to me afterwards and he's like, shakes my hand. He's like, Stephen, that was so awesome. Thank you so much. Got so much value. Um, you know, the Lita technique, it really worked for me. So I was like, great, Omar, you know, thanks for letting me know. And then, um, so the next day I'm sitting in my office and ding, I get an email. And I look, lo and behold, it's Omar. And he says, oh my God, Stephen. He's like, I use the Lita technique with my boss. And it was amazing. So I email him back and I was like, Omar, good for you. Great. Awesome. And then like three minutes later, ding, I get an e e another email from Omar being like, oh my God, Stephen, I'm not having sex with my boss. So it just can, if you have those awkward or uncomfortable conversations to have with anybody in your life, friends, family, colleagues, bosses, teammates, choir members, whatever your jam is, the Lita technique is something that's really powerful and can actually shift things and increase the chances of you getting more yeses in your life. And I don't know about you, Vanessa, but I like getting more yeses. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, that's totally cool. How do you also recommend communicating about sex with your girlfriends? Mm. And so that we can start talking about these things. Because I think even one of the questions that comes to mind, and we can dive deeper into this right now, is whenever you were thinking about sex, you're always trying to compare and gauge like, what is normal? How much sex should I be having? Should I be orgasming? Like, what does my vagina look like? All of these things we don't know. So how do we start talking about that? And maybe we can talk a little bit more about like, what is normal and kind of dive down that. Uh, sure. Yeah, really great question. So the first one, how do you have those conversations? So what I find is really helpful when you do have conversations, you want to have real conversations with people in your life that aren't your sexual partners, is set some parameters, set some rules of engagement that, ha that happen before you have that conversation, or else you just can kind of have that light kind of, you know, and listen, we want to break, we want to complain. Sometimes we just want to like hang out with our girlfriends, have some wine and just you know, have at it, eat some cake, whatever the fuck, cool, do that. But there's some times where you want to like actually take it to, to another level. So setting guidelines. So some of the stuff, so I host events where we have real conversations about sex and what's really going on in people's lives. So some of the stuff that I do, I talk about is the respect and confidentiality. So this stays inside of this group, inside of this time. I don't want to be like out with you, like at a spin class or at the club or at book club. And you're like, so Susie, how is that anal play going? And you're like, what? You know, and everyone's like, oh, damn, Susie. You like the butt stuff, right? We don't want to have that. So first of all, confidentiality. The second thing is respecting diversity. Again, it's busting that myth of that sexual symmetry. I am not like you. What I fantasize about, what I do with my partner, how often, how long, how many orgasms, what my pussy looks like, all that other kind of stuff. I am a unique. I always say we have a unique sexual fingerprint that makes us different from everybody. And we've been taught we've got to fit into this box. It's garbage. So respecting confidentiality, respecting diversity, using I language when I share. It is my journey. It is my truth. Cool. I'm going to share that with you, but I'm not going to generalize and be like, oh, all girls, all guys, all sex. This is the best. Speak in generalities because it's not. So own that it is, um, it is your story and using I language. Um, and then some other things that, again, depending on your group, you want to talk about is like no shaming, right? Um, and you can set guidelines around how, we're, how you're going to share. We're going to like, Pass a pen around. Well, I just dropped my pen. Pass a pen around. Whoever's speaking, you know, speaks. Um, and then we're going to go around. You could have things of we're not going to give advice to each other. Um, we're going to share um, or uh, contribute by giving shared experience. Like I've been through that and this is what I did. You know, or whatever kind of, now we're kind of getting into whatever you kind of conversation that you want to create. But some of those are just, it's a different kind of conversation. It's like, hey, can we have a different kind of conversations? But setting that safe place 
and, and creating that safe space is so important to actually go down and talk about real things that are going to make a difference in your sex life and have people around you that can support you. So that's the first part of your question. The second part of your question was about what's normal what's and not. Normal. Yeah. Like how do we know what's normal? And if I think that's something that we all think and ladies, I know we have some people on live right now, feel free to comment in the chat box. And if you have questions of, of, of what you think is normal, but I think we see porn, we see other people talking, we see how sexual our society is right now and how women use sex. You know, you look on Instagram and you look at people's pictures. So I think we're always in this comparison of where am I on this spectrum and what does this look like? Yeah. So uh, again, really good question and something that comes up a lot and something that a lot of women struggle with is, is what is normal. And underneath that question or behind that question is, is, you know, the fear of being judged and made wrong. And I believe as human beings, our greatest desire is to be loved and accepted. So when we talk about our sexuality, again, and it is that taboo thing, um, it can be scary. So again, if we go back to, you know, everybody having a unique sexual fingerprint, um, Alfred Kinsey is one of the, the, the grandfathers of modern day sexology said the only unnatural sex act is the one that cannot be performed. So there is no such thing as normal when it comes to sex. What there is, is statistically normative, right? So if you look at a bell curve, it starts here and it goes up here and then goes down here, just kind of like around my head like that, right? So the majority of people may have sex like this, but you may be down with something like that's over there on the side. You know, so there's like this, this whole thing of like, oh, you should have sex this way. Again, sexual symmetry, this, it should look like that. I like to share with people like if 1% of the population, um, only 1% was interested in things that you were interested in, that's uh, 750 million people in the planet that are down with how you like to get down. So there is no normal. There's this world that has been constructed about what's acceptable. And again, if we look at messages that we've received from society, from media, from religion, from family members, from all this stuff, and you're like, no, I like, you know, putting on a sailor hat, putting peanut butter on my nipples and barking like a dog. I'm like, girl, go get it. Fill your boots. As long as it's consensual and your partner's down with it, have fun with it. So there really isn't any normal. If it feels good for you, if it's consensual with your partner, do whatever the F you want. If you, wanna, if you, if you don't want to have sex until you're married, if you want to get married and have no sex, if you're asexual, if you want to go to a gangbang tomorrow night, if you want to have one night stands, if you want to have uh, slaves that serve you sexually and you're dominant and they're submissive, cool. If you want to have missionary sex through a hole in the sheet once a month with your partner and that's what gets you off and what brings you closer, cool, do it. We get so focused on the what it looks like, we forget about why we have sex. It's kind of like a car and you want to get to a destination, but you're so concerned about the color of it, if it's electric, if it's got Wi-Fi on it, what kind of stereo it has in it, that we actually don't get in it to actually get to where we want to go. So if we look at sex as like, hey, want to have a, like pleasure, connection, intimacy, love, kink, releasing anger. Like there's so many different ways that you can have sex. And, and sex, I really believe, is, a, is something that honors and serves who you are and who your partner or your partners are at that time. We get so concerned about that and like, oh, what it is that we're actually either not present. We talked about that. We're a spectator looking down or, we, or, or we're worried about it. We don't have sex and we can't actually let ourselves go and get to that destination because we're so concerned about what it looks like on the outside. So there is no normal. If anybody tells you that there is a normal or anybody starts shaming you or saying like, oh, that's weird or you're a pervert or whatever that's a red flag either to one re-educate that person depending on your relationship with them or it's a red flag to be like all right see you later this isn't going to work and especially 
um, you know, that's, I mean, I find it for women in, uh, who identify as heterosexual and they have male partners. Again, as men, we've been taught that we are, have the biggest penises. We always please our partners. We always are ready for sex. And we are the ones that are supposed to want sex more. We're the ones that are supposed to be more adventurous, right? And so it, it sometimes can be challenging for a man who's in a situation with a woman who is empowered, who has done the work and is like, let's go. And they're like, um, you know, and so that's when some of that judgment and that shaming and all that other kind of stuff can come in uh, into the equation. So does that answer your question about what's normal? Yeah, that's so fabulous and so important. I really just want everyone to hear that there is no normal. Yeah. And, yes. and that's a, it's a mindset thing too. And we just need to stop comparing. But in, in that journey, it's going back to what we were speaking about in the beginning of just diving deeper of what does sex mean to you and answering those questions. What do you think about sex? What does your conditioning look like? And how do you reprogram that blueprint so you can have the sex you want? Yeah. Can we chat a little bit more about the sex journey? So what are some challenges that women who don't have a partner may feel? Is it harder for women to, and just people, if there's guys listening too, but is it harder for people to have connection when they're having one night stands or in the beginning of a relationship? So that's going to be unique and different for each and every person. So there is that perception where, and some of the language that we use, and again, communication is, is so important. It's like, oh, um, I'm not, um, it's uh, nothing serious or it's just casual. I'm like, I beg your pardon? When I get naked with someone and my body parts are interacting with that person, that shit is serious. There is nothing casual about it. So we have this world that we create that there's sex that is good and there's sex that is bad. And again, where I go back to is what, what honors you at this time? You know, there's women that I talk to, they're like, oh, that was my slut phase. And I'm like, I beg your pardon? That was your what? You know, like, oh, that was your place where you owned what was going on for you? and um, you access sex in a way that's different, and there were more partners in your life than you have now, okay, cool. Was that driven by something that you felt empowered about and felt really good about? Was that something that you felt uh, a lot of shame and guilt, and that's how you acted out so you could get attention from guys? Let's talk about that, but let's not paint this picture about what's good and what's bad about you know, a particular sex act. Um, I kind of forgot your question. Can you, can you? Yeah, it was just about the sex evolution and how oh, yeah, yeah. Being of a relationship it might be more difficult. Yeah. So, so um, again, we, we have this, this world of like, oh, if, if you're single, whatever single means that, again, it, it's, it's better if you have a partner and to have um, sex with a partner. Well, maybe that works for some people. Maybe that doesn't work for some people. It's wherever you're at in your journey and honoring that, Sex is what I, a lot of the, the work that I do is looking at sex as a buffet. It's not like, oh, I got to eat. Like, listen, I like eating pizza, but if I eat pizza every single night for a month, I'm like, I don't want to have that. It gets boring, right? Sex, you can have sex because you're sad and depressed. You can have sex because you're angry. You can have makeup sex. You can make love. You can fuck. You can have kinky sex. You can have just this part of sex. You can have sex really slow. You can have sex hard and fast. You can have sex with yourself while your partner's there and they're watching you have sex with yourself while they're having sex with themselves and it's awesome. But sex is something that honors where you're at in your life and on your journey. There is no right way to do thing, something and the good way to do something. And I think more and more people are becoming disenfranchised by people or institutions or um, teachings around that because I don't know um, anyone and, and I like to say this when you battle yourself you always lose so if you're in your head being like oh I should do that I shouldn't do that but that would be good or I'm really fucking turned on or like oh my god give it to me now and you're like no I can't that's so wrong that's so bad fine if that voice wins then you suppress yourself does those, do those sexual urges go anywhere? No, they're unsatisfied. They build up, build up, build up, and then they come out in ways that may not be healthy or may not be 
honoring the relationship structure that you're in. So, you know, for me, it's, it's really having people take a look at where they're at. And again, it, it's, I'm not saying have more sex, have less sex, have whatever you want kind of sex or whatever, or wh whoever your partners are, you know, male, female, trans, you know, gender fluid, non-binary, what the, f I don't care. It's less about the mechanics of bodies interacting. Once you're connected to that person and you have a level of intimacy and you have a level of communication and understanding about what you guys want and you're both on the same page, cool. If that's a hookup in a bathroom of a Burger King, cool. If this is your life partner that you're going to journey through the next 60, 70, 80 years of your life with, awesome. But I am not one to judge and tell you what is right. And quite frankly, nobody else is other than honoring yourself and then creating that and making sure that's consensual with your partner or partners. And how do we keep things spicy and how do you continue to engage? Because people might go through this journey and think, Oh yeah, I've been there, done that. And we want to keep that evolution going. So how do we continue to expand what we think is possible and expand into sex? Sure. So, um, great question. A very common question that I get. And I'm like, sometimes it's okay to eat porridge and whole milk. Like, why does it have to be spicy all the time? It's impossible. People are like, how do you keep it spicy? How do you keep it exciting? How do you blah, blah, blah? Like, F off. Like, I don't know about you, but like, I'm sure there's, you know, ladies on this call that are like, I'm stressed out about work. I'm stressed out about my family. I'm taking care of my parents. I'm trying to figure out the finances. I'm building my own business. My husband or partner didn't take out the garbage. I'm like trying to get fit because I don't like my love handles. And, and then it's like, oh, but I need to have great sex. Look at my hair. It's good, baby. I'm hot. No. You're on a sexual journey. There's going to be highs where you're like, oh, like feeling yourself. Like Stella got a groove back. And there's going to be times where you're just like, oh, hell no. I'm just going to take my pussy and hang it up on the wall because it's not open for business right now. And that's okay. Again, if we go back to what we were talking about, communicating about that, we have been taught and quite frankly conditioned to think that more sex is better, longer sex is better, and more orgasms are, are better. The reality is it doesn't have to be there, but as long as you're talking, like talk to your partner. And one of the things that I recommend, if you have a partner or you're gonna have a partner, check in with that partner at least once a month, if not, once a week, if you're going through a bumpy period, just to see where we're at, check in with them. Be like, you know, how are you feeling about our sex life? Have an understanding about where they're at and where you're at and talk about it. It's like, yeah, because they're stressed and they got their own stuff going on, but they're like, oh, no, I got to, it's, uh, it's sexy time. All right, baby, let's go. But in the back of their head, they're like, oh, mother, father, do we have to do this right now? But if there's a lack of communication and we don't talk about that and honor where we're at, it just kind of devolves into the ethos and it's never talked about. And then you're in a sexist relationship and you're like, how did I get into this relationship? So first of all, I just want to say that it doesn't always have to be more exciting, more spicy, more hot, blah, 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 blah. It is okay as a human being. I go through those periods. People are like, oh, you're a sexologist. You to have like, blah, no. I'm human. It doesn't have to go like that. And working with the thousands of people that I have, they're not always in the right spot and feeling super sexual. And I get calls of like, why, what's going on? I'm like, well, what's going on in your life? Because again, I said, it, it's a sex is a, as a symptom of what's happening in the relationship Two relationships, the relationship that you have with yourself and the relationship that you have with your partner or your partners. Okay. So, um, Remind me your question again, because I wanted to finish off the last part, but I got caught, caught up in what exciting and, and oh yeah, okay, good. okay. Yeah. So now, now we talk about porridge and whole milk. Yeah, let's talk about um, keeping it exciting. So I shared that looking at sex as a, uh, a as a buffet that has all different things depending on where you're at. 
what you're feeling, where your partner's at, where they're feeling. So one of the things um, on my website that I have is something called a sex menu. Some people are like, sex menu? So you know, you go to a restaurant, you have like a regular food menu, you're like, I like this, 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 and this. That's exactly what a sex menu is. There's different levels of spiciness. Vanessa said spicy, how to keep it spicy. So there's like one pepper, which is just a little bit spicy. Two peppers, three peppers, whatever. And I think there's 260 odd different things over those pages. And again, it's not an opt-in, it's not a funnel. I'm not gonna collect your email or anything else like that. You just click on it, download it. And it has columns. So one is um, experience. So if you want to share, if you have a partner, and if you don't have a partner, cool, this is developing your sexual self-awareness for yourself. So everybody do it, okay? You can download it and it says experience. So you can mark off if you've had experience in that or not. Now, if you're gonna do it with your partner and you're like, I don't really want to know how you got down with your exes, cool, leave that column without that. Next is like interest. And it's a scale of like zero to five. Five being like, I want that yesterday and zero being like, oh, hell no, that is not my jam. Then there is notes and nuances. So you can write stuff beside it. Okay. So that is something that you can go through and it's, there's going to be some things that are you like, oh shit, that's hot. There's going to be some things that you're like, yeah, I did that yesterday, Steven. And there's some things you're like, oh damn, I got to Google that. I have no idea what that is. Right. Just don't forget to delete your um, search history afterwards. Um, so that's something that people can do to like start expanding what that is and do it for yourself. And if you do have a partner, get them to do it and get them to do it separately and then decide, come together and have a conversation. Be like, are we going to switch? And you're going to read mine and I'm going to read yours. Or are we going to go one by one down the lines of what's there? And then you can start cracking open that conversation of like, oh, I didn't know that you liked that. Or I thought you liked this. Or that's something that I thought you really enjoyed. Um, so that's something that, um, and I, I'm sure you'll give them or I'll talk to them about my website afterwards. So there'll be links that people can check that out. Um, another thing that, can, can I keep sharing an, another technique? Okay, so another thing is something called, um, what I call is a sex matrix. So you're like, do I have to take the blue pill or the red pill? No. Um, so a sex matrix, if you just look like uh, like an um, intersection of like a graph, so there's four kind of quadrants that you're looking at. Something that you can do um, with a partner, and it's about consensual power exchange. So we're not talking about kink or BDSM. That's something else that if you guys want me to do another webinar, I have uh, lots of experience in sharing that, uh, specifically with women, about how to create that in your life. But let Vanessa know if you want some more of that. Um, but it's about just sharing power. So all you need is like your phone, right, and agree on a time, right? So 10 minutes each so it's gonna be 40 minutes because there's four different quadrants and so the first you're gonna set the alarm for 10 minutes or the countdown whatever and you're gonna please your partner the way that you think your partner wants to be pleased with no direction from them then the alarm's gonna go off and then it's gonna switch and your partner is gonna please you the way they think you like to be pleased with no direction from you. And the alarm goes off and then you switch. Now you're gonna please your partner, but your partner is gonna tell you how they want to be pleased. And then the alarm's gonna go off and then they're going to be pleased, but you're gonna tell them how you like to be pleased. And then from there, so it start, you start shifting that back and forth and start exploring and be like, Oh, like I've never done that before. Or, I've never said that before. Or, I didn't even know you like that because I did that up here. But then I, you said to do that down there. Like, why was that? And it starts breaking open some of that, those conversations. Cause we get caught in what I call like a sex rut. We do the sex dance that we do. Like if you just take a moment. Yeah. Like my partner touches me here and then we do this and that this, this leads to that. And then there's like maybe like oral sex and then fingering and then, penetrate and then the whips come out and then we go to sleep right like and that's what we do that's what sex looks like and so the only difference between a rut and a grave is the depth of a hole because eventually it's like oh like that isn't exciting so the sex menu and the sex matrix are two things that you know i offer to to people that are looking at like how do we mix things up and, and have it really cool and fun 
This is so perfect because you're giving so many tactical tools that whoever mm -hmm. is listening to this, you can go away from this conversation and start implementing and start diving deeper. And obviously yeah. you can reach out to Steven, chat with him one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to link all of his stuff below. So if you're watching this on YouTube and or podcast, just look above or below this information. You'll see all of the website and contact info for Steven to reach out before we finish up. Mm -hmm. I want to chat a little bit more about any about society and conditioning. I'd mm -hmm. love to know what changes you're seeing in society as mm -hmm. people become more open, become more liberated. What, are, what trends are you seeing and how are you seeing that evolution happen? Yeah, really, really good question. So there's a lot of things happening right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, and again, I'm going to start kind of high level and then work down. So um, women are making money. Holler. So they no longer have to put up with relationships where they were financially dependent on their partner for supporting them, supporting their family. So there's a trend now that uh, more women are ending relationships than, than men are. Because they're like, hey, I'm making some money. It's cool. I don't have to, I don't frankly don't have to put up with this anymore. I want great sex or I want this and they're not or whatever. So that's a trend we're seeing. I mean, obviously we're seeing a trend with men, or excuse me, women owning their voices inside of the Me Too movement and time's up to be like, fuck that. That is not happening anymore. And I'm fed up with it. And we're going to have a voice around that. So the shifts and the repercussions and the adjustments that um, are being made um, for, you know, men in positions of power and, and for, quite frankly, women in positions of power and, and having that voice, I think with um, access to the internet um, and access to porn, and again, I don't think is porn is inherently good or bad or, or evil. It's how it's used, but actually looking at things and being like, oh, you know, if, if there's something on your sex menu and you go through and you're like, what does that look through? Google that and be like, hmm, what part of that am I comfortable with? Or what's the first step that I would like be comfortable exploring or sharing that with, with someone or having a conversation with someone about. I also think if we look at generation Z's and, and, and some millennials for that point are like, what, why did my, why did my parents do this? Why, why, why am I conditioned and taught that this is one, how I have to identify how I have to have sex? Why, why do, why do I have to get married? My parents broke up when I was like two. That didn't work. I don't want to have that. I want to actually, you know, connect and have sex with the people that I want. I think again, in that generation is like how they express themselves sexually, how they identify sexually. It's like, no, I am not going to conform and say, this is the way it has to be. And this is the way it's got to be for the rest of my life. I think um, sex and technology is at a really interesting interface. I think over the last five, 10 years, there's been such um, uh, uh, an opening and an acceptance of pleasure products for women um, and actually like listening to women and having high quality um, uh, uh, products that are designed by women for women that, you know, can last forever and recharge and 15 different vibrations and blah, 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 blah. And, and that's going to keep evolving and, and growing. Um, so that's something that I'm really excited about. Um, I'm excited about women having um, a voice and women um, sharing and owning that voice and saying yes. Because for so many women for so long, the only word that they were taught to say around sex was no. Even if they wanted sex, they had to say no. And it caused so much, you know, there's, there's so much like, suppression of expression when all you can say around sex is no and wait or, or have to be the person that's like this the sexual defensive one and then the partner is the one that's like trying to have sex and trying to do that like that's just that model is so broken for so many different ways and causes so many challenges um inside of relationships so that's something where i see um there's movement and can be you know so much more of that and again that's why I get lit up about working with women because 
they are the ones that are, as I see it, are going to shift the dynamics and have great sex be part of, you know, a, a healthy relationship. Because from where I stand, there is an epidemic of people either having no sex or bad sex inside of relationships or if they're single. How do I navigate that space? I'm swiping right on like all these dudes and it's like gross. How, how do I do that? So seeing more um, women owning that and just being like, hey, this is what I'm looking for. Are you cool with it? Cool. And for you to get an all access pass to this ride called my body, these are the things that I need. I want to be respected. I want to be heard. I want to be cuddled. I want to be whatever it is. These are the things that are important to me. And, and, and inside of creation of a relationship, like, hey, this is important for me. Talking about sex is important. Having those well, you know, and people are like, oh, well, how do you bring up sex? And you're dating and it should just be this like magical thing and you should come together like Disney. And then it's like this amazing sex. And if it is an amazing sex, well, I don't know if I'm going to keep seeing them because the sex isn't good. I'm like, oh my God, I want to like bang my head against a wall because sex is something that's created. It's something that happens inside of conversations and understanding each other. Not because we hope that Again, this, this sexual symmetry is going to happen and that their unique sexual fingerprint is going to match my unique sexual fingerprint and then we're going to have great sex together. Again, that model works, I don't know, 30% of the time, 50% of the time, but people are throwing away relationships that could be great just because they don't know how to have those conversations. So again, women stepping up, owning their voice, talking about that, talking about that early in relationships because like, Damn, I don't know anybody who wants to get in a relationship with someone that they're not sexually compatible with. You know, there's joking about like, well, you want to test drive before you buy. Like that, I mean, there is truthiness in that. I don't want to be as flippant as that saying is, but this is important. This is a sexual right. This is part of our sex, our human expression. It's not, it's not something to be suppressed. It's not something to be ashamed of. It's not something to be hidden. And it's not something to be silent about. And again, that's where I'm seeing some of those shifts of women specifically stepping up, owning their voice, and creating the sex that they want. And quite frankly, the sex that they deserve and is long overdue. Yeah, that's so awesome. I honestly, even just having this conversation and all of you listening right now, I hope that you feel so empowered and I hope you feel great inside. This is meant to be a conversation for you to feel good and for you to just keep evolving and having fun and, and being adventurous. This should be exciting and something that lights you up. I hope that you don't listen to this and feel fearful and feel like you have so much to do. Just do with it what you want, have so much fun, and just try out some of the tools that Stephen taught us today. And, and hopefully you can continue. Oh, see, we have some comments. People are feeling empowered. So Yay! yeah, that's awesome. Cool. If you ladies have any other questions, feel free to comment quickly. Is there anything else you wanted to mention or chat about before we finish up this chat today. Yeah, thank you, Vanessa. So one of the things, so if you got value from this, if you're like, hey, that's cool, I want more of that. Um, so I'm creating events, both in person, if you live in Toronto, as well as online. So if you're outside of Toronto, or you're like, hey, maybe I just wanna you know, do this online. But the events are called Don't Come. And what it is, is I'm creating a safe space to have real conversations about sex to explore the you know, often challenging, difficult world of sex, to ask questions, to share stories, to have fun. And this is, you know, I'm creating, it's a really safe space that I create and a bunch of people get together and we just talk about sex. So again, if you're interested in that, you can go to, I'm sure there'll be links above or below, but the website for that is don't come. So D-O-N-T-C-U-M dot C-A slash T-L-C. And then you can click on, it says, hey, I'm interested in the in-person Toronto ones or the online ones. Um, so that's something I created for the ladies community. Um, and so that's, a, oh, the, the, uh, the sex menus at drdewitt.com. So that's D-R-D-E-W-I-T dot com. And it's in the top right-hand corner. You can just click on sex menu. Um, and then, you know, again, just to build off what you said, Vanessa, um, 
there is so much great sex out there for you to have. And if anyone is putting pressure on you, is anyone making you feel bad or ashamed or guilty for what you like, what you want, or how you want to express yourself, um, you know, that's a red flag. And that'd be, you know, someone who either, again, have that conversation with or start looking for someone who can like love and accept yours, you for the like amazing, powerful, juicy, intelligent, sexual woman that you are. And, um, and sex can be such a, a powerful place to stand and to own that for yourself, first and foremost, in who you are, in what you love, in, and, and, and having that a part of like your self-love, and then you choosing who you want to share that with. And then come from a place that that's, you create that with someone, not just them telling you what they like or hoping that it's going to work out. And so I really hope that this, you know, helped you with some communication tools or with some things to talk about. Um, I'm here as a resource. Again, I love working with women. That's who I work with um, at conferences and conventions. Um, and um and retreats that i do for women as well so i am here to support or if you just have a question or you just want to let me know what's up or you know send me a dm and give me a high five on instagram um i'm i'm down for that too so that's all i gotta say thank you perfect what's your instagram uh so my instagram is at uh dr dewitt so at d-r-d-e-w-i-t Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. If you ladies have any other questions and you want us to dig into any other topics, let me know. And we can bring Dr. Steven back to, to chat more. Honestly, thank you for being so open, so real, so vulnerable, and for putting the in the work to get where you are today. Because I know you're helping so many people and I love working with people like you and your message and your energy is just so spectacular. So thank you for being here. Awesome. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Awesome. And thank you ladies for being here. All I have to say is go get it. Go get yourself some fun sex if that's what you want. So go get what you want and what you need. You deserve it. I love you so much. Have a good evening, everybody. And we'll chat with you soon. Bye. Bye.